On the left is my face a month ago, and on the right is my face today. I try to get the same lighting, I think it's close. Now the facial hair is definitely a little different, but if you look beyond that, I think it's pretty obvious the change is in my jaw. What's up guys, Derek, moreplates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Connor Murphy again, and his, uh, mewing and uh, fasting transformation of his face. So he basically claims that in 30 days, he basically transformed his cranial structure and significantly enhanced the jawline in particular and um, some other bold claims that are essentially unsubstantiated that we're going to be delving into here. And frankly, you're just kind of fucking ridiculous. So anyways, I'm going to get started on this. I thought the heroin was going to be the only one I would be commenting on, but you know, I've done mewing videos in the past and like, frankly, it's not a topic I talk about often, but it's relevant. It's still something that I adopt and try to practice on a regular basis. It's something that's going to influence my sleep apnea severity. So it's something I do keep in mind. And you know, when I saw this, I was like, dude, come on, like, fuck. So anyways, let's get into it. Yo, what's up, guys? So most people think that you're stuck with the face that you're born with, that there's nothing you can do to change it at all. Well, that is simply not the case. So there's this thing called mewing, which has become very popular recently. And all it really is is correct tongue posture. So along with that and some face exercises, I was able to drastically improve, in my opinion, the shape of my face in the past 30 days, especially around the jawline area. And at the end of the video, I'll show you guys that transformation. First, let me explain a little bit about mewing. So it's a essentially placing the tongue on the roof of your mouth and keeping it there. Over time and with practice, this becomes your tongue's normal and natural resting position. Not only does it widen the face and push the lower jaw forward, but it also stimulates nerves around the pineal gland and helps improve its health. The pineal gland is very important for physically feeling good, but it's also very important for having spiritual insight. And most people have this calcification of the pineal gland that kind of limits this extra sense that you can have. In the next video, I'll talk to you guys about some cool supplements you can take to help this decalcification process as well. Okay, so the supplements he's referring to, I basically elaborated on my stance on them in the hair loss video. So if you haven't checked that out, hopefully there'll be a card up here and you can go check that out. You can see my stance on it. But um, as far as decalcifying your pineal gland, your arteries and your scalp, um, you can get all my insight there, but let's continue. But anyway, more about mewing. Most people do it wrong. They just put the tip of their tongue on the roof of their mouth and that's it. To do it correctly and to get the most benefit, the entire tongue needs to be on the roof of your mouth. In fact, the back of the tongue is the most important. It's what's really gonna help push your jaw forward and change your face shape. So to get the feeling of mewing, I want you to smile with your teeth and then swallow. Now at the end of the swallow, that feeling is where you should be keeping your tongue. Just hold your tongue in that position. This is actually natural tongue posture. It's how we evolved to rest our tongue. Modern society has caused this environment in which many people grow up having bad tongue posture. For example, pollution and these unnatural substances in the air along with just poor health in general has caused increased allergies in kids. Allergies can cause mouth breathing which then cause kids to grow up with this incorrect tongue posture and their face shape and their health suffers. So just to clarify, this is your natural resting tongue posture. So I do sort of agree with this. I've detailed this in my videos about mewing and sleep apnea and all this kind of stuff and how the tongue posture will influence the development of the face and uh, blah, 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 and MPB airway and such and such. And you've already probably seen the explanation of it if you're even watching this video, but you know, there's truth to what he's saying. However, some of the shit is like, the claims that are about to come up are pretty absurd. Your tongue will move out of that position all the time when you eat or when you talk. But when it's at rest, it should always be on the roof of your mouth. So guys, I started mewing like a year ago, but I was doing it incorrectly. And because of that, I didn't see results. I used to have just the tip of my tongue on the roof of my mouth like most people and I didn't have the back of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. But about a month ago, I figured out how to do it correctly and the results, in my opinion, are pretty crazy. So to speed up the process, I also did something that's called a hard mew for a few minutes every day where you just apply more pressure to the roof of your mouth with your tongue. Also, I wanna say that these results aren't necessarily normal. I think my results are pretty crazy. I think a lot of it has to do with all the fasting that I've done over the past month. Okay, so the results being crazy and oh, maybe it has something to do with the fasting. Well, 
Maybe it has to do with the fact that you probably weigh a lot less. That's, and maybe you're trying to make it look like there's a drastic before and after. I don't know. I would say the weight loss is probably a big thing, you know, just not eating food and losing actual water retention as well as literal fat off of your face. I think that probably is making the biggest difference in 30 days. Or is it your bones moving? I don't know. Fasting has been shown to release a lot of growth hormone and growth hormone will help you make these changes a lot faster. So you can kind of start to see how all these practices are tied together, they're connected. Okay, so this is the first piece of complete horseshit, unfortunately. So even if you could somehow cause changes, I'm not gonna say mewing doesn't work in adults, first of all, like if I wasn't hopeful that it did, I wouldn't do it myself. But anyway, and like I've literally switched from a face mask to a nose mask for my CPAP machine. I've done a lot of things to kind of tape my mouth shut, like all kinds of crazy shit to try and influence it. So anyways, the um, changes you see in 30 days, like his before and after is 30 days, you're not gonna see anything in 30 days. Fasting, if anything, keep in mind here, would impede bone growth. IGF-1 levels are going to plummet during a fast, especially an extended fast. To claim that a process that is done intentionally to initiate autophagy is somehow going to have a proliferative effect and grow bones in the absence of any nutrients, exogenous nutrients, and crushing IGF-1 levels is completely ridiculous. So to not see the extension between the GH and IGF-1 axis, like Connor is so narrow-minded in that he thinks that GH going up equals bones moving and growing. And it's like, bro, first of all, you're a full-grown adult. Yes, high doses of growth hormone above and beyond what you naturally produce can spike your IGF-1 up. And in turn, in tandem, working via that GH IGF-1 axis can cause remodeling and tissue growth not necessarily in a conducive way typically because it's usually <laughs> associated with acromegalic features. However, when you actually look at the data on IGF-1 levels relative to GH, GH and IGF-1 are important regulators of bone homeostasis throughout life and during the pre-pubertal period, GH and IGF-1, both of them, are detriments of longitudinal bone growth, skeletal maturation, and acquisition of bone mass, whereas in adults, they are important for the maintenance of bone mass. However, when you actually dig into this and you look at some models where they actually looked in specific scenarios of GH excess with IGF-1 deficiency, you can actually see the net result it had on bones, bone growth, or should I say lack thereof. So we can see here. Now in these cases in particular, we have undetectable IGF-1 in serum and tissues but we have elevated GH. So this is a model evaluating impaired IGF-1 action. And what we see in the net result of body size, when you have high GH levels, something you get from fasting, crushed IGF-1 levels, what happens with fasting, 70% reductions in overall body size, 40% decrease in linear bone growth, 50% decrease in aerial bone mineral density, 30% decrease in cortical bone mineral density, and 50% decrease in periosteal bone circumference. So does that sound like something that is conducive to growing your jawline? No, it doesn't. So fasting, what does that do? It's gonna, you know, deplete water retention out of your body. Sure, it's gonna make you look more shredded temporarily. You're going to get rid of a lot of the bloating you might have in your stomach. You might get rid of the fluff around your face temporarily until you reintroduce a bunch of carbohydrates into your diet and electrolytes in conjunction with that and whatnot. But dude, to claim that elevations in GH or even imply it are going to somehow remodel your facial structure in 30 days, when in fact, the clinical data suggests it would do the opposite, is just ridiculous. Now just to see how significant of a reduction of IGF-1 you get from fasting, we can look at here two to five days fasting in both mice and humans. This isn't just a rodent model. Fasting for two to two or five days respectively causes an over 50% decrease in IGF-1, a 30% or more decrease in glucose, a five to tenfold increase in the IGF-1 binding protein and inhibitor IGF-1 BP-1. So what is IGF-1 BP-1? 
basically, if you actually delve into the research of fasting and autophagy and whatnot, you'll hear guys like, you know, Dr. Walter Longo, who's a very respected uh, doctor in this field, talk about how fasting cycles uh, retard growth of tumors. And it's basically something that puts growth of stuff into the whole point of it is to inhibit the proliferation of things and the um, growth. It's a, it's a catabolic thing but it's also regenerative and helps heal a lot of, you know, abnormal processes and things that have gone awry in the body. But it certainly does not contribute to anabolic processes like you would get by driving IGF-1 up. So not only do you have crushed IGF-1 levels, but a spike in IGF-BP-1 levels in a fast bind IGF-1 to reduce the insulin-like activity of IGF-1 on metabolism, further exacerbating the growth-inhibiting effects. That's the whole point of the process is to avoid something like what would occur during a growth phase. The whole point is to heal. So to claim that it has some sort of like anabolic type action is just like the complete opposite of what actually happened. So you can kind of start to see how all these practices are tied together, they're connected. Good mental, physical, and spiritual health, it's all connected. Essentially, it's all the same thing. Also during the past month, I've been doing face exercises for a few minutes every day. So I do this exercise. I'll do two sets of 50 reps, and I'll also have a towel and I'll bite down on it for 60 seconds as hard as I can every day. So without further ado, here's the change in my face. On the left is my face a month ago, and on the right is my face today. I try to get the same lighting, I think it's close. Now the facial hair is definitely a little different, but if you look beyond that, I think it's pretty obvious the change is in my jaw. So this before and after looks great, right? But honestly, this is no different than the before and afters that Many, you know, mewers have put up, like I, even before I even started mewing, I put up a clickbait image before when I was fat versus when I was shredded, bodybuilder on steroids tries mewing. And it's like, I put it, at least I put a disclaimer in the video description saying that the before and after had absolutely nothing to do with mewing. It was the result of fat loss. Um, and it was just used to like entice people into following my log. And then I actually posted real before and afters a year later, which I actually posted recently. And after a year of doing this very consistently, I haven't really seen anything, to be honest. There was a reduction in these lines, the nasal labial folds to some extent, but what was the result of that came more so from using a nose mask besides a face mask that I had squished into these lines for eight hours a night through my CPAP mask. I don't think I had anything to do with mewing whatsoever, which I'm pretty sure anyone who watched that video knew that's the conclusion I came to. It doesn't mean that I don't, I'm not going to do it though. I'm going to continue doing it and hope it does do something. But even after a year of doing it properly, I don't think it's really made a substantial difference. And for Connor in 30 days to claim, in addition, while he's doing things that literally inhibit his progress, like fasting, to claim that in 30 days, he significantly changed his jaw structure and improved his bone fucking, <laughs> it's, a, it's just baffling how like this is even processed in his mind as a, like something that has actually occurred to me. Like, I don't know, like to me, this is just a very obvious positioning change and just like looking and trying to make your jaw look good versus not look good. and you know, when you fast, you're going to get leaner because you're literally not eating food. So what's the result of that? Your jaw gets way leaner. Like I've, <laughs> you can literally see the before and afters of my face in my most recent uh, video I did on dieting and how I lost uh, 75 pounds. The before and afters of my face are fucking absurd. And what is that? It's the result of fat loss, not the result of mewing. So I hope this motivates you guys to get working on your mewing, not only for aesthetic purposes, but also just for health in general. Tomorrow, I'll talk to you about something even more crazy. How I quit all the chemical hair loss treatments that I was on and was able to start regrowing my hair completely naturally. Something that's absolutely unheard of in the realm of science. So get excited for that video. I'll see you guys here at the same time tomorrow. Okay, so the transformation, unfortunately, is BS. As much as we'd all like to think in 30 days we can make those drastic changes. To be honest, the number one thing you need to do is get lean. If you haven't got the single-digit body fat percentage, throw away any idea of you need facial surgery, I need bone implants, I need this, I need this, I need that, I need fucking mastic gum to chew my jawline into godliness. 
Like, fuck, get, just get lean. And you have no idea what your face looks like till you're single digits. And then you can establish, okay, do I have some sort of like thing that I really want to fix at that point? And by all means, start mewing and like doing the jaw exercises and whatnot. Like they certainly doesn't hurt. And at, you know, I do think it actually plays a role in health, the mewing thing, like breathing through your nose versus your mouth in terms of like the ratio of carbon dioxide and things like this. And it's kind of like, frankly, perhaps negligible things in the grand scheme of things. But, you know, if you could improve your facial structure in adulthood, like as well as improve your circulation, like why the fuck wouldn't you do it? And to me, it doesn't take any additional time out of my day to put my tongue up there. So that's what I do. It's not a big deal to be honest. So, but to like claim the changes in 30 days and like legitimately believe that that's what happened to me is just nuts and kind of like, you know, promoting fasting, like it's something that accelerates the process. And when it's actually the complete opposite, kind of ridiculous too. So though that's my thoughts on it. Should you mew? Why the fuck not? Do you want to do what should you do? Jaw exercises? Why the fuck not? If you have time, but don't think that the results are going to come in 30 days. And if you want 30 day results, start getting into a deficit or fast if you really want to, and you'll lose water, weight, and fat real quick. I'll put you, I'll tell you that. And your before and afters will be way more significant than anybody who's mewed because you're literally going to see what your actual facial structure looks like under all the fluff. So take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think there was any actual cranial changes that occurred in this video other than just the redistribution or elimination of tissue fluid and actual fat. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm not trying to hate on it, by the way. Like, honestly, it's just the claims. It's cool if you say, you know, oh, you should mew because it has potentially this health benefit and it might benefit your facial structure in this aspect. And this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm pursuing it. And this is my goal and whatever. That's fine. And all the other people who've like posted mewing stuff, it's like most of them are in it like, I don't know, I guess some of them have some pretty bold claims too, but it, you know, most people are just trying it and trying to like record their progress and like try to, at least in my case, I was trying to improve my health outcomes as well as if I can get some cosmetic changes that are good, then pff, fuck yeah, cool. But um, for Connor, it's like to be like, oh yeah, the pineal gland, the calcification, and in 30 days, I totally transform my face and blah, 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 you should do it too. Like, bruh, keep doing it by all means. I'm gonna keep doing it, but don't like come at us telling us like this is what can happen and this is what happened when it's like, and explaining processes that are like the total opposite of what would be conducive to anabolic processes in the body. So take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe. Helps the algorithm when you comment too. So if you can comment anything, your algorithm comments are always much appreciated and they're always pretty funny. Also subscribe to the mailing list if you want to get sent any updates on bodybuilding pharmacology, hair loss prevention pharmacology, um, health and longevity research, uh, optimization, whatever I happen to be writing about at the time. The articles are far more in depth than my videos and they're broken down into subsections with table of contents and have uh, all the clinical studies I reference hyperlinked in case you want to delve into them further yourself for your own personal research and you won't get sent those articles if you don't sign up to the mailing list. So I highly recommend you subscribe to that. Also, if you listen to the podcast, link in description below if you wanna hear me on audio while you're driving or whatever instead of on YouTube, um, subscribe to that. And if you do listen to it, please drop a five-star rating. It helps uh, the algorithm there too. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplace underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok. If you wanna support the channel, check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, my TRT clinic if you want to um, seek out hormone optimization and you are a candidate, it's free to talk to them to see if there's anything about your current health status that may be deficient and or, you know, warrant optimization in some capacity. It's worth reaching out if that is something that interests you. If you end up going with them and, you know, qualifying for treatment, that's something you want to pursue. The coupon code will give you $50 off your first treatment. Um, if you want to support the Gorilla Mind Nootropics and pre-workout formulas I develop, um, just straight up pull out your pre-workout that you have right now, compare the label to mine, you'll quickly see why you should switch. And I literally go get on a Word document and write these up from scratch myself. Highly recommend you check those out, um, especially if you want to support the channel, obviously. Um, and anything else I'm associated with is in the description below as well. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.